I was reading the selection from the book of Genesis today and a childhood memory surfaced on something I had not thought of or remembered in well over 70 years. The selection from Genesis read, God formed man out of the clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life and so man became a living being. I remembered that I had clay to work with as a child. I presume it was a common toy that children had, an inexpensive toy. I, I remember making little men out of clay, animals too. I thought, I can't recall whether the people I made were either fathers or mothers or soldiers or just other children, but I imagined them to be alive and I was able to give them form, but I could not breathe life into them as God has done to each one of us. Regardless of how man, woman came to be, for many of us it is awesome to acknowledge our coming to be because of God's action in our lives. As an adult, I now understand how God, taking a clay figure that I shaped, could allow it to have life. I suspect whoever penned the song we know to be, Psalm 8, also came to believe how God could breathe life within us and not only give us life, but make us to be little less than his angels. Our world today continues to be the paradise that was spoken of by the, authors, the author of the book of Genesis. Admittedly, there is blight. However, across the universe, there continues to be food and water, floral rather, and waterways that are gems to behold. God continues to provide, but for some of us, what he provides apparently is not enough. Like the first man, Adam, men and women today want more, even if the more would only serve to separate us from God. Jesus addressed this quest for more today in the gospel. The more that some are seeking is not benefiting them or the rest of us. And he used the example of some of the, some of in his generation who refused to eat certain foods, suggesting that they were harmful to the soul, responsible for some of the ills that humanity was inflicting on people and on this world. And Jesus called them out. Foods per se, he said, are not forbidden fruit. Men and women, he said, are still eating bitter fruit, when, which is harmful to the body, the soul, and leading to behaviors and vices that undermine the life breath that God breathes into each one of us. Adam was asked to choose. We have the same challenge that Adam did. What will we feast on? The forbidden fruit? or feast on the tree of life. Jesus says, I came that you might have life and have it to the full. How blessed we are to be able to feast on him today in our prayer, in our family prayer, in these scriptures that have been proclaimed and the Eucharist that we are about to receive.